Ladies and gentlemen, this is a public service announcement. Yorkcraft will need 100 subscribers before this building can be blown up with TNT. Hello once again, and welcome to instalment 7 of Yorkcraft. On this one, we'll be covering St. Mary's Abbey and a lot of the things that sadly I'm going to have to destroy, as they're in the wrong place, but as a certain Bob Ross once said, we don't make mistakes, just happy little accidents. So over this way we have where Booth and Bar used to be, and this connects on to the King's Manor and the rest of the St. Mary's Abbey building complex. Sadly, a lot of these nowadays are gone in 1547 with the reformation of the churches and the Protestants. Uh, all of the abbeys were taken down, and as this entire area obviously had pre-dressed building stone and there was no building listings, people just took it to build their own houses, which means a lot of the buildings in York built after 1547 are actually made from the old abbey and its support buildings. As far as the support buildings go, there are very sparse records. A lot of what we see I have taken from an old painting that was done in the 1530s. Well, I do know it was pretty much a self-contained village with dormitories, farms, blacksmiths, all that kind of thing. And if we go over this way we can just see the end of the bar walls. We have Lendl Tower on the left, Barker Tower on the right. And if we do head back down the river uh, we see a lot more of the buildings which sadly I don't really know their purpose. Presumably it would have been storage or dormitories for the poorer people that lived in the abbey grounds. And I'll go into this roofed building on our left in a little bit. But as we do come over here we can see St Olive's Church directly ahead of us. That's actually there in real life, as is this cemetery. Although uh, a lot of that is actually covered by overgrown trees and you can't really explore it anymore, which is unfortunate. You can see a lot of it as well, it's only half built. I was actually in the middle of building this area and I realised that everything was in the wrong place and had to stop and strip everything back to the cathedral and work out again. Now as far as the actual abbey building itself goes, a lot of what we do see in front of us isn't there nowadays. In fact the only thing that really is there is on our left hand side of the transept we have a lower section, that's the aisle. We have the back wall of that as well as one of the main supporting columns for the central tower. Everything else is pretty much gone, but thankfully there is a few hand sketches and designs of what it used to look like in here. It does essentially look like a half-scale minster that's slightly uneven. So this would have been the choir pit, as we have in the minster, but you may realise it's actually in the middle of the central tower, which uh, is a bit strange. That does obviously lead on. We have various chapels and the chapter house just to our left. You can just see where I started one of the chapels here. Obviously a lot smaller. It's even got its own rose window. And this here would have been known as the Monk's Isle. It does lead through this door into the herb garden just on our right hand side. And on the left we have the entrance to the vestuary. And the last section that we're going to be looking at is the roof building I mentioned earlier. This is known as the Hospitium. And this is actually where we get the word hospitality. It was essentially the guest house in the glory days of the Abbey. And this little archway to the left of it is still here in real life. It's the only bit of this building that is left. It's called the Watergate. Indeed, there used to be a canal which came from the river. So presumably this would have been used as storage. And I do know the ground floor of the actual Hospitium was definitely used as storage. Obviously it would have flooded a lot when the river came up, so they didn't want anything perishable down there. And Hospitium, hospitality, upstairs must have been the bedrooms. So this is actually what this looks like nowadays after the renovations. And I do know part of it would have also been dropped, so it would have looked slightly different, but I'm going for the grandest possible thing I can in York, so this is how we're going to make it look. And you can see here we've obviously designed the river as well. This little tower in the corner is the Watergate, and this was destroyed by Cromwell's cannons in the Civil War. Wow, you've made it a full seven videos in and you're still watching me. Well, here's a little bonus from two years ago. I was only seven months into building it. In fact, it does not look like the Minster at all. There's no bell towers, only one transept, no ceilings or anything. I obviously made a lot of progress since then. That's pretty much what these first seven videos have been about. After this, video 8 onwards will be more about expanding the borders, building new buildings, hopefully a bit more of a funnish history lesson. But that is pretty much all we've got time for on this one now, so as always, it's a massive thank you from me. If you liked it, hit that thumbs up button. If you want to see more, hit subscribe and the bell, all that lovely stuff. So, bye guys, stay crafty.